Rudy is great rat taking out the Demon King body Gotti in a duel. Obviously a little bit skewed because of the circumstances. We're just using our best attack and body Gotti is taking. But still, he took him out. But that's not the most surprising thing of the last episode. You know what it was? It's Cliff securing Eddie Narize. And here's what I think is going to happen. There's two ways. First is, somehow, Eddie Narize is able to withstand her curse because Cliff has a horse cock and he's able to just go 10 times a day. Or, the circumstances are such that Cliff is down for other dudes to be with Eddie Narize because of how much he loves her. And Eddie Narize has never been in a situation where she could have been in a romantic relationship because of her curse. Cliff is willing to overlook that. And you know what's even crazier? Apparently, and this, is like, this isn't really spoilers, but Body Gotti and Eddie Narize, they're past lovers. In season one, there's actually Body Gotti introduced in season one. Body Gotti has a fiance, you know, that Kirishika girl, right? But she's too small. So it's literally stated, apparently, that because she's too small and Body Gotti is too big, Body Gotti has to go for a different girl. Eddie Narize being one of them. And now, because Body Gotti is at school, similar Eddie Narize, you know what things are gonna happen? I think Cliff is gonna one day walk in on body guardy back shots on Eddie Nadize, and it's gonna be amazing. Or maybe it never happens. Anyways, let's start today's reaction. The princess. Wonder if Eddie Nadize fucked uh, Lucia. <laughs> what the? F Person is so cute. But I wonder how Sophie is feeling jealous right now or not. Hmm. <laughs> she does feel jealous. <laughs> No, Sophie! No! You can't compete with the dog girl! What can I say? He's so strong and cool and his limp dick. Oh god, I love that shit. Oh! I thought it was for the princess's sake! It's just that she's so, like... She's so shy and embarrassed, like, what if he completely forgot? Princess, give her the order. Do it. Take the glasses off. Release your identity. Hmm. Yo, 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 finally! The erectile dysfunction arc might be coming to an end. You can't summon people. We have one? Nanahoshi? The masked one, the, 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 the silent one. Some, something the silent, right? Ah, there we go, there we go, there we go! Remember, Nanaoshi from episode, some from Isekai, sorry, season one, beside Orsted. Nanaoshi has to be an Isekai character. There's multiple things. Apparently, the Karage chicken in this school, right? That's Japanese influence. There's Nanaoshi right there. The school uniforms, modern Japanese school uniforms, also something Nanaoshi invented. And the name, Nanaoshi. You think that's Japanese? Oh, shit. Long time no see. How's our man Orsted doing? Oh. Is Rudy's gonna- Once he sees the mask, how will he react? Hello! Hey, technically she saved Rudy. The only reason Orsted healed Rudy was because Nana was walking was like, hold up! Oh. Where's Daddy Orsted at? <laughs> Holy shit! I mean, that is some crazy trauma though, huh? Holy fuck! Imagine if she showed up at the homeroom with the other special classroom students and he acted like this. That'd be insane. That mask is so scary looking. You straight up passed out? Lap pillow. It's Sophie, right? Sophie lap pillow? But Rudy knows that Fitz is a guy. In the lap, you know, it's gotta be kind of be gotta be careful. Yeah, where is Orsted? I want to see him again. It'll be a why he's coming for us? No, 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 I think Orsted's a good guy. I think he's actually a good guy. Misunderstood. Ah, <laughs> oh, Sophie, you missed turning point two, right? Turning point two. Oh, man. Fucking pierced through the chest. But... He did heal us back, you know? Are you an isekai character? Are you from Japan? Mm. Huh? What is it? Shinoha Akito, Kuroki Satoshi, Japanese writing. They're both Japanese. Nanahoji is a fucking Japanese name. But here's the thing. 
Rudy got born here and the parents named him. Nanoshi doesn't seem like it. She probably just got ported here, no family. Like she wasn't born into this world. She just got summoned here? But I thought you can't summon people. Yeah, but we're talking the language. It's not, it's not the names. Uh, don't worry about it. Mm. She's a bit different though. What does she look like? She's probably a beauty. No! No! That's the girl? From episode one? What the fuck? But she got ported here, right? She got summoned, right? Sparing you. <laughs> she did do that. Yeah, Orsted didn't know because they're from different worlds. Orsted knows the flow of time in this universe, but like other outliers like Nanahoshi and Rudius were not from this world. They're like a... What's the word? They're the outliers. Kind of hard to believe considering turning point two, but she was the one that told Orsted, hey, back up, heal him up. So go back to our world. Sophie is probably so confused. Sophie is probably so confused. I love how her ears are covering Rudy's eyes. Let's not go back to our old world. I like it here. Fuck the world in Japan, like right now. Like, let's not go back to modern world. This is so awkward for Sophie. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, all right, because Sophie didn't even understand a single exchange of dialogue. Oh, no. Fantasy manga light novel, but bitch, this is an adaptation of the light novel. Yeah, Rudy was born as a baby. Now, no, she wasn't. She just got summoned. But I thought you can't summon people. She didn't get reincarnated. But she's, si yeah, but she's also similarly the like, same age. You know, a lot of time has passed when Rudy grew up as a baby to now. Not now she doesn't seem like she aged much, right? How did you just meet Orsted, though? Because she's different. She's different. Like, she's not part of this world. You know? And Orsted is very probably very keen on what happened. Like, why are you here? Why are you not part of my calculation? I just realized we completely ignored Sophie when Sophie said, please speak a language that I can understand. Take <laughs> Rudy just completely ignore her. Yeah, we're friends. She helped us out. Even though she put a fucking horse to put a hole in her chest. Yeah. What's up with the dragon god and the man god? An apostle of the man god, he said. He called us an apostle of the man god. Apostle is not a very friendly term. Huh? What method? Teleportation. Teleportation. Ah, here we go. Do we need to go find these ruins to learn more about teleportation circles? We need to go have a meeting with Orsted. A person. Exactly. Who would have summoned Nanahoshi? The world will erase us? What do you mean the world will erase us? We're like anomalies that's not part of the system. Y what? This is kind of a huge plot point that we're just casually glossing over. Don't we have to find the person that was part of the... You know the book of teleportation, of the teleportation labyrinth and the guy who fucked up? Oh, because she got ported, right? But we have so much. We have so much. Being reincarnated is so much better than being teleported, man. But, but, but again, back to the book of the teleportation. Apparently, there's a guy that tried to attempt the teleportation labyrinth, but he failed and he wrote the book. Maybe that's the person that we need to get to? I don't know. I don't seem to age. Why? That explains a lot more about how Rudius was obviously from a baby to now, but not how she seems the same. Damn. And the food sucks, true. That's why she made the karage chicken in part of the school menu, right? So the plot now is to learn more about teleportation to get Nanaoji back to Earth. Keep in mind, Sophie's still around here, completely getting ignored and ghosted. Peacefully? <laughs> I don't know about that. Oh, more Nanaoji thighs. Goddamn, goddamn. We can still work together, though. She got the knowledge, we got the mana. Sophie in the corner just <laughs> sitting there. Why won't Rudy speak the language I can understand? 
Poor Sophie. <laughs> Poor Sophie, she's getting ignored so hard. What are you gonna do about it? Maybe she'll send Orsted after us. What color is your panties? Don't say that, Rudy. Don't say that. Sophie. Hello. <laughs> Nothing. I'm sorry, Sophie. Five years ago, she arrived here. But obviously, she was Rudy's more than five years old, so it's a difference. Backlash? I still think Rudy is the reason of the mana disaster of his, like. You cost it? I thought Rudy was the one that's part of it because of the immense mana pool, but Nanahoshi caused it? I still think that it's partially Rudy's fault for being in that town and gathering so much fucking mana. Oh! It makes sense why she'd be angry, but... Yo! Rudy's gonna understand. No, no, no. No, Rudy, understand what this might mean. Also, I thought she didn't have mana. But maybe it's the rings that causes the barrier? Her identity might be disclosed pretty soon. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's not her fault. Yeah, she's a victim too, Sylvie. Chill out. <laughs> but I've never seen Sylvie release that much emotion in my life. I thought for a second, Sylvie might indirectly disclose her identity to Rudy by saying, like, look how much we suffered because of the mana disaster, but maybe not. I still want the theory of it being Rudy's fault because he was there with Eris and all those years growing up. He just subconsciously gathered so much mana in the sky. Him going out in the fucking field and using the new present staff and then boom, mana disaster happened. Probably caused it. Probably. I still think it's Rudy somehow. Mm. And maybe what triggered it is what Rudy is. Wonder why her mask is cracked. Sophie, come on. Come on, Sophie, it's time. Sophie, come on, do it. Oh, the distance between them is closing. Oh, it's. Oh, okay. I thought they were gonna grab so you get. What the fuck? It keeps happening. What's going on? And then they're gonna stop. Rudius. <laughs> Sophie, don't get jealous. Come on. It's not like that with Nanahoshi and Rudy. Yeah. We're not romantically interested. Come on, take the glasses off. Take the glasses off. Come on. Come on! <laughs> okay. Oh, Still nothing? Ah! Princess said you can do it, though! First time seeing Sophie that angry, though. You gonna do it? You gonna do it? Come on, pull the trigger! Ah, come on! So much plot this episode, but still a lot of questions unanswered. First of all, Sylphie now has the order from the princess of, hey, you can disclose your information if you like, but I never knew that Sylphie felt shy or embarrassed to think that maybe Rudy forgot about me. And it definitely would make sense because our hair color changed too. If we just remove the glasses, do you think Sophie, like Rudy would notice? I think Rudy should notice the, the wand that Sophie has though, because that was from season one. Nana Hoshi. Like, again, it wasn't specifically mentioned in the anime, but there were certain points apparently watching, like, cut light novel content from Annie Yusu's channel that Nana Hoshi was, um, like, already existed at school. I thought that Miss Silent could have been Fitz the Silent, but no, it's Miss Silent, right? So Fitz is like a male in this current, uh, whatever we're doing right now. So, Nana Hoshi, like, Karage Chicken, you know, the meal that Rudy said, wow, this is actually pretty nice in that one episode. That was, like, a little hidden detail of Karage Chicken, named after Nana Hoshi? What do you mean? That's Japanese. And the school uniforms, the modern uniforms, Nana Hoshi herself, you know, basically implemented that design here. Nana Hoshi just wants to go back home. Makes sense. He was like teleported here and her life was probably pretty good. And I never knew that Nana Hoshi was actually one of the girls that we saw in episode one and season one, you know, in, in the traffic, right? That's crazy to me. So five years ago, she was teleported here, meaning it wasn't the same time when Rudy got hit by the truck and got isekai and reincarnated, right? Now, 
the mana disaster. Nanahoshi said, probably I caused this. Probably talking about some kind of backlash. Do you think this backlash is the world trying to get rid of them? Because there was a specific point where Nanahoshi said, if you change the altar, like if you exterior forces that's not part of this world try to impact whatever timeline it is, then the world will try to get rid of you. So in fact, that itself is the mana disaster. I was always under the assumption that because Rudy's mana has been compared to Demon God Laplace, in even just recently too, but also in season one, that Rudy's existence in that kingdom where we were tra uh, training Eris, all that time growing up, the mana was subconsciously being stored in the sky by Rudy. And there were some other people at play here too. And the moment that Rudy went out and tried to test out his new staff, that's when the detonation or when the mana disaster actually happened. It can't just be a coincidence. But now that Nana Hoshi said that's like the same time when she arrived or something, I forget exactly that she thinks she probably did it. I think this is a misdirection. I still think Rudy is definitely a part of the problem because specifically Rudy says, he says, oh, I'm so glad that, you know, it's not my fault. Ain't no fucking way the author would write that unless, you know, this is some more revelation for Rudy in the future to realize, holy shit, everything that happened, it's my fault. And again, Sophie's getting angry. I've never seen her react like that before. That emotional response was so good. This episode, fantastic. But hey, if you're still here, if you enjoyed this reaction, please like the video, check out the other playlist for even more content. And until next time, take care.